and report that through the government's ongoing monitoring and testing programme as of today, 559,935 people have now been tested for the virus, 133,495 have tested positive, and of those who have contracted the virus, 18,100 have very sadly died, and we express our deepest condolences to the families and friends of these victims, and my heart goes out to every single one of those who have lost a loved one throughout this crisis. As a government, we continue to take the steps necessary to slow the spread of this virus. The social distancing measures that people have overwhelmingly adhered to have meant that fewer people have, have needed hospital treatment. That has protected our NHS capacity as we continue through the peak of this virus, and it has undoubtedly helped to save lives. At every point in this crisis, we've considered the scientific and the medical evidence that we've received very carefully and we've been deliberate in our actions so that we take the right steps at the right time. Now, I know it's been tough going, tough going for businesses, for families, for vulnerable members of our communities up and down the country. And it's been a physical strain as we adapt to living and working at home while not seeing our family and our friends in the usual way we would like to. It's been an economic strain as businesses have had to furlough staff which is why the Chancellor launched the various business support measures to help see businesses and workers through these difficult times. But it's also been an immense mental strain on everyone. People stuck at home, families worried about their finances, and the elderly more isolated than we'd ever want them to be. We are making progress through the preak of this virus, but we're not out of the woods yet, as Sage advised last week. And that's why the measures we introduced must remain in place for the time being. The greatest risk for us now, if we eased up on our social distancing rules too soon, is that we would risk a second spike in the virus with all the threats to life that that would bring, and then the risk of a second lockdown, which would prolong the economic pain that we're all going through.